Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about IP addresses and network classes. Now the idea or the concept of network classes is one that is very fundamental to your overall understanding of how IP addressing works. It's going to be something that is part of the conversation from this point going forward. So as long as you're a network administrator dealing with IP, you need to understand uh, network classes. So that's what we're going to address today. and. In the last tutorial, we discussed the concept of grouping IP addresses together. And we now know that an IP address has a network portion, which identifies the group itself, and then it has a host portion, which identifies each member of the group. Well, ask yourself this question, are all networks everywhere in the world the same size? Well, you can probably guess the answer, and that is no not all networks are the same size. And so when IP was defined, they also defined classes of networks along with it. And we're going to look at three classes of networks that were defined in IP. We're going to start off with the Class A network. And Class A networks are very large networks. And then we're going to talk about the Class B network. Class B networks are more of your medium-sized networks, not as big as your Class A. And then finally, we're going to talk about Class C networks, which are for small size networks, so they're not quite as big as Class B. We're going to go through each one of these and figure out what they mean and, and how they're useful to us in understanding IP as a whole. All right, so let's get started and take a look at Class A networks. Class A networks are very large networks. Now, how do we know this? Well, the network portion of an IP address is limited, is limited to just the first octet. Okay, so that means if we have four octets, the first octet is the network portion, and then octets two, three, and four are the host portion. So if we look in a, at an example, I will write, da write down a network number and as we discussed before, a network number is the ID, which represents a particular IP network. And here, the first octet is 10. And that is the network portion, which means octets 2, 3, and 4 are the host portions. Now, why is this a very large network? Because we have three octets available to us to number hosts. So there are a huge number of hosts available in a Class A network. In a little while, we're going to look at all of the, the sizes of these networks, and you'll get a better understanding of just how many hosts you can fit into a single Class A network. All right, so that's Class A. Very large, the network portion limited to the first octet. Let's take a look at Class Bs now. Class B networks are considered medium-sized networks. So they're not as big as a Class A, yet they're going to be bigger than a Class C. So they're right in the middle. Now the network portion of a Class B is the first two octets, which means the host portion has to be the second two octets, in other words, octets three and four. So we kind of split the IP address in half. The first half is just for uh, the network portion, and the second half is just for the host portion. If we write out an example here, 172.16.0.0. So the first two octets are for the network portion. So you can see, because we have two octets as opposed to one octet in a Class A, we can actually create more Class B networks because we have more room. We have a whole second octet in order to create more of them. However, each one is going to be smaller than a Class A because there's less room in the host portion of a Class B network. All right, so we can create more Class B networks. However, each one is going to be a little bit smaller than a Class A network. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at a Class C network. Class C networks are considered small networks, especially when compared to a Class A or a Class B. So with a Class C, the network portion is the first three octets. That means we're only left with one octet, the fourth octet, for the host portion. 
I'll write out an example of a Class C network, 192.168.1.0. So here, the first three octets are all dedicated to the network portion. So again, we can figure out that Class C's, we can create more Class C's because we have yet another octet, the third octet, now dedicated to creating Class C's. So we can create a lot more of these than we can A's and B's, yet each Class C is going to be small because the host portion is just a single octet. And remember, an octet has a maximum value of 255. To illustrate the differences of the three classes of networks, you can see here how each octet is dedicated. So class A, you just have your single octet for the network portion, whereas class B and class C have two and three octets dedicated. So from this point of view, looking at it illustrated like this, you can see why a class A is so big, because you have three octets for hosts when you, when you compare it to B and C, just two and one. Likewise, going in the other direction, a class C, you can have so many of the class C networks because you have three octets dedicated to making them, whereas class A just has a single octet for the network portion. Maybe you're wondering, well, how do you know if the IP address you're looking at falls within a class A, B, or C network? Well, here's the answer. Each class has a range in the first octet that's dedicated to it. So if you're looking at the first octet of an IP and the number falls between 1 and 126, it is a class A network. Likewise, if it falls between 128 and 191, it's a class B, and 192 to 223 is a class C. So if you're looking at the number 172, you know it falls within the class B range, therefore it is a class B network. In the third column here, we've listed all of the, the network numbers. So you can see 1 through 126, 128 to 191.255.0.0, and that's because class Bs can occupy the first and the second octet. So that's why you're including the second octet in the maximum range value there. Likewise, in class C, the range is 192.000 all the way up to 223.255.255 because, because class C's can occupy the first three octets for the network portion. Okay, so you have to memorize this chart because you have to know just by looking at an IP which class it falls into. So again, you'll always be looking at the first octet to determine that. Well, Pause the video, write this down, and commit it to memory. And then when you're ready, come back and we'll look at the next chart. If you're wondering exactly how big are the classes in terms of networks and hosts, well, this chart here gives us an idea. So if we look at the second column, total number of networks, we can see the formula and we can see the answer for each one. And you can see the numbers are pretty, pretty big. So starting with a class A, 2 to the 7th minus 2, you get 126. And that makes sense because our range is from 1 to 126. Now because we only have one octet dedicated to the class A, there are relatively few networks available to us that are in the class A range. However, now if we move down to class B, you can see because we have two octets available to us, that number grows significantly. So there are a total of 16,384 class B networks available. It's a pretty big number. However, it's not even close to as big as the number of class C's because we have three octets available to us. We have a little over two million class C networks. Now, if we look at the third column, we can get an idea of how big each network is in terms of how many hosts can live in that particular group. So for a class A, that's your biggest one. You can have the most hosts there. And the formula there is 2 to the 24th because you have three octets dedicated to the hosts. And that gives you almost 17 million hosts for each class A network. And there are a total of 126 class A networks. So that's a lot of hosts, not only for each network, but then in total, all the class A's.
If you look down at the class Bs, it gets a little bit smaller because now you don't have as many octets available for the host portion, only two this time, so it's two to the 16th, and that gives you about 65,000 hosts per class B network, and there are 16,384 class B networks. And then finally, the class C is the smallest number because it only has one octet dedicated to it um, for hosts, and there the total number is 254. This chart here is also something you'll need to commit to memory. Um, it comes up um, in the certification tracks, so it's something you just have to commit. Uh, I suggest memorizing the formulas. Um, that's probably the easiest way to go. Okay? And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. To summarize what we went over, we know that there are three classes of networks. And each class, A, B, and C, has some unique characteristics to it. Now we can tell an IP belongs to a specific class because each class is identified by a particular range in the first octet. So again, go back to those charts and memorize them. And each class is unique in terms of the number of networks and the number of hosts available. And that's because each class has a different formula in terms of how many octets are dedicated to the network portion and how many octets are dedicated to the host portion. Okay, so that's everything you should know about uh, classes of networks. There's a fair amount of information, but if you go through it a few times, it'll start to stick. And include this in, in your, your lessons of mandatory information that really you just need to commit to memory. Okay, so that's it. That is IP addressing and, and network classes. Thanks for watching.